Hey guys, welcome to otakusandgeeks.com reviews. Today I'll be reviewing Ren Dodas of Benazine. This was actually a requested anime review. It was requested by one of our readers a long time ago, I think a year ago. I'm so sorry for the delay and for anybody else, I'm going to be catching up on the requested reviews. So, let's talk about the stories and the characters. But here's a brief synopsis first. Ren may look like an ordinary office lady on the outside, but she's actually a private investigator taking on any jobs, from finding a stray cat to infiltrating a high security corporate lab. What's more, she appears literally indestructible, supernaturally healing any injuries and mutilations. Together with her partner Mimi, Rin dwells into the, dark, the darkest secrets of the society, but the ones she hides herself are far more sinister. Ah. Uh, this was only six episodes, and I have to admit, it took me a while to actually get into it. Maybe because just, you know, with me, when it comes to anime I, and, or anything that I watch, I usually decide or usually the first five minutes for me are very important. So if I'm not grabbed and just like, boom, captured in the first five minutes, it takes me a while. And the first five minutes didn't really grab me, but as I started watching it a little bit more and then started getting into it, that's when I got invested into the series and that's when I really started enjoying it. I really did enjoy the story and I thought Rin was an excellent character. She basically is an immortal and what 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 I really did enjoy about it is you know they didn't they didn't really show I like how they showed how people deal with this immortality especially the females now there's this thing that's okay there's like this fruit that goes around and this uh, supernatural force and what it does is that it consumes people and Ren was consumed Ren and Mimi was consumed years ago and they it grants them um, healing powers and they live immortal so they can they you know they won't be able to die unless they get killed by a male who's consumed by the same fruit and they call them angels not the same angels that you're used to uh, in the religious or spiritual realm but these angels are just guys who are granted superhuman strength but unfortunately there's a trade-off for that they kind of lose their humanity and in order for them to like survive or live they have to find the female who's also consumed by this fruit and they basically will have to mate with them and just basically take their fruit to, you know in order to survive a little bit longer I did like that concept and that's one big adversary that Ren faces throughout the series. She faces this one particular angel that's been stalking her and just wants her to get more powerful so he can steal it and you know he'll be like the badass or the big strong guy that he's destined to be. Story wise it does, I really like I said I like the character of Ren. I like how they picture her. She's this tough private investigator and you gotta be tough I mean you've been living for centuries you gotta be tough and what I do like about the story is that it jumps from different centuries and time zones so one minute you're in the 80s the next minute you're in the futuristic 2050 um, so it, it does a really good job of balancing that out and just showing you how long Rin is living how as, as long as she lives she starts to there's times that she actually gets how should I say a little bit she starts to question the immortality. I like how she starts to regret it a little bit from time to time. And you really see that because it has to be hard to be immortal because you, you, you're living forever and you meet people, friends and family and you start to invest in them but you know that they're going to eventually die but you're kind of yearning, you're yearning for that type of relief as well but you don't get it. And I will say for adversary wise, I will say that the bosses and the bad guys were really well, good, really good done. Um, I will say from a kid's standpoint, this is not for your kids at all. This is a mature, and I mean mature, uh, anime. This has sex scenes, a lot of Yuri action, yay, a lot of Yuri action is in this. Um, there's a lot of nudity, a lot of violence, and there's actually this one character that I really want to talk about. Which was played by Monica Rao, which I'll talk about in the voice acting, uh, which is uh, Sayara. And she was just sadistic, man. I loved her character. She was only like only in a couple of episodes, like I think only two episodes, but she was so sadistic. Like I, I will say she I wanted to see more of her. I was hoping that she would be like more of a main, main villain, but she she has enough screen time for you to understand her plight and what she's going after. And I was actually I, I can't uh talk 
anything about Rin without talking about one of the main male leads, which is uh, Tatsumasu. And he was just... What I loved about his backstory, I'm not going to spoil it, but I love his backstory because it makes you question whether it was actually the real him or was it another form of him. But if you watch the anime, you know what I'm talking about. And I love the way he, his character was and how he was introduced. Overall, the story is really good. I, did, I would say that the ending and towards, the, I would say, the fifth episode, it kind of goes a little bit out there because it gets into this whole... You know, it really gets into the supernatural and it kind of, kind of basically just leaves the original setup that the anime had for it. But it still flushes out pretty good. But I will say the ending kind of just goes way out there, but it's nothing really too major. But it's really an enjoyable anime. So let's talk a little bit about the voice acting. Rin features the voice talents of Colleen Clickenbeard, Christopher Bevins, Carlene Harp, Jamie Marchi. Lucy Christian, uh, Monica Rao, and Todd Hepicorn. And there's tons of more voice actors, and everybody does a really great job of this one. I really enjoyed the performances, especially, like, I, I, I don't know, when Monica Rao plays Bad Girl, it's so good. Like, she did in Vampire, like I said in the um, Vampire, Dance in the Vampire Bud, Bud review, she, when she gets that sadistic voice, it's very chilling and in this one she has this one sadistic scene where she's kind of torturing somebody and she's enjoying it like her voice just sounds like she really is enjoying this torture scene and it was just like it's just bone chilling actually and uh colleen as as ren very powerful very 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 well done especially the even the emotional scenes and she's funny she's witty and she can be compassionate she's tough and I had no real problems with the voice acting, and Todd, of course, Todd, it's Todd, guys. He, he Todd nails his <laughs> Todd nails his role, even if he is a little sadistic and on on his role as well. But overall, the voice acting was really good in both Japanese and English, and I really did enjoy it all the way through. Nothing really over the top. Nothing really overselling it. I thought the performances were what they needed to be and it was a great solid cast and the cast did an excellent job. So we're going to go into music and animation. Music and animation. I love the opening theme. It's very catchy. It is a very, very catchy song and I think it describes Ren and the lyrics describe Ren's uh, the anime very well. The background music is really good as well. I love how each episode you know you get a change a little bit not that much but you do get a little bit of a change I, I feel like the music felt felt with each century and each time zone that Rim was in and for the most part some of the songs are really emotional some are powerful especially death scenes that you know the like music really does kick in and may, really hits home I will say the animation I really did love I love how you know as the century progresses or I should say the time zone progresses, you see a little bit more CGI. We all know I'm not that big of a fan of CGI use in animation because I'm so old school with it. I love just the hand-to-hand -hand drawn, frame-to-frame -frame shot type of animes. But with Rend, it works because if you're in the futuristic zone, you should have some CGI. I, I really love the fact that in the future, the, the way they were taking phone calls and how things were just implanted, it, it, it was great. The animation is beautiful there's no real real complaints with it and I, I thought the action for the action wise the action is really good too uh for for the, what action it has in there i would say because this is more of a story driven plot thriller but you know when the action does kick in it does get violent and the torture scenes it is violent and hey the sex scenes is hey whatever it's the sex scenes it's pretty cool too so final grade i'm gonna give ren daughter of the monazini a b minus it is enjoyable. It has great characters. It has solid performances from the voice actors. I would say sometimes towards the middle, towards the end, the plot does get a little bit, huh? Yeah, it gets that way, but it does tie around. It does get better. And I don't know, maybe because of the Destiny thing, it, I, I wish, you know, 
they would have played a, just a little bit more on Ren's dealing with the immortality and sometimes how she was frustrated. I would love to see more of that type of situation. But for the most part, it is a really good anime. It's dark. It's gritty. It's entertaining. It's funny at the same time. Great performances. Good music. Good animation. It's an anime you should check out. It's on Netflix, and it's only six episodes, so it's not going to take too long to watch. So this is Justin from otakusandgeeks.com. Ren, daughter of the Menazini, gets a B-. Later days, I'll catch you in the next one.